What's going on guys and welcome back to a brand new video and today we're going to be going over Ten Hag's new 433 that I personally think is going to deploy next season. If you do enjoy the tactics of this channel, be sure to leave a like, drop a little subscription and hit that notification bell so you never miss another upload. So the first thing we're going to do is go over some of the official signings and also some of the signings which we think have to come in purely because we need them as players. The first player we're going to bring in is going to be... Andre Onana, previously of Inter Milan, obviously a deal which is very close to being finally done, just United being United, taking their time signing players, when reality is we need a goalkeeper desperately now. Now, this guy fills me with a little bit of hope and a little bit of doubt. I have seen some absolute howlers from Andre Onana, and he has got a bit of a hot head. Also, you know, he had the whole doping incident, which we're not going to talk too much on. But I do believe this goalkeeper, he can provide something to Haya, possibly can't. He's definitely a lot more aggressive, coming out, collecting crosses, and he's not afraid to play out from the back. But we have seen mistakes with that sort of gate or sort of part of his game. So it is going to be a very interesting thing to see how well he does. And I really want to get your guys' thoughts in the comments of what you think of Onana as a goalkeeper. But this is going to be the first player we bring in. The next player is going to be Mason Mount. And again, kind of mixed opinions on this guy. He's not obviously a great assister. He's not a great goal scorer, but it's not why you sign Mason Tony Mount. That's not why you sign him, because at the end of the day, you sign him for the stamina, the legs. You know, he can run about that midfield. And to be honest, it's exactly what we need. We've got Casemiro who can protect that back four. We've got Bruno Fernandes who can obviously create the chances. We're sort of missing the last piece of the puzzle. And get a mount in would allow us to play a 4 3 3. Casemiro can be by himself, obviously, protecting the back four. Casemiro would be a perfect box to box, really running up and down the channels. And Bruno Fernandes can obviously supply that front three. And I do think. In terms of a player that can purely do that, he is probably one of the best options on the market. Now, again, it is a bit of a risk because he didn't have a great last season, but then nor did Chelsea. So it's quite hard to judge a player based off that because that Chelsea team didn't really have many standout players at all. So hopefully Mason Mountain can come in and do a job. And last but definitely not least, a player that we need and I hope we can get a deal done. That is going to be for big Erasmus up top. And realistically, this is probably the most important signing because we need a striker ASAP. We don't really have one. Obviously, I don't know what's going on with Martial, but we can't go into a season like we did last season without really anyone. No disrespect to Weghorst. He worked incredibly hard, but it's about time United had an actual goal scorer. And it seems to be a position where we're quite cursed in getting people in. Um, Obviously, the last real goal scorer we had was Ronaldo, but he affected a lot of team chemistry, a little bit toxic as well. So it's sort of an interesting position that we definitely need to fulfill. And I'm hoping we can get that done because we can't can't keep playing, you know, realistically wingers in that position all the time. And it's going to be interesting to see if we can get a deal done for this guy. In terms of actually in the game, he is absolutely incredible. And I'm hoping that we can get to see that in this season. Obviously, we're going to be doing one season just to see how the following or the season that's going to be coming up is going to be simulated with United. And hopefully we can come out with some good results. So let's go over and do that with this new 4-3-3. I have locked in Martinez at the back, Onana in goal, Casemiro, obviously Big Rasmus, and also Mount and Rashford. I'm going to lock those in the positions, and that's pretty much because I believe they are going to be playing there as much as possible if those players definitely come in. Well, they have come in apart from Rasmus. If he does come in, he will definitely get game time. So the season has been simulated, guys, and it has been a massive success. We have won the Premier League by one point, which would be absolute scenes if we'd done that in real life. It's going to be big Rasmus coming in with 27 league goals, Marcus Rashford with 7.64, and Bruno Fernandes with 21 assists. Manchester City, Arsenal, and Chelsea making up the remaining Champions League spots, as it is going to be, who is it? Sheffield, Forest, and Luton going down. We also didn't go home empty-handed in terms of other trophies. We also won the Carabao Cup against, that is going to be Manchester City in a 4-3 win extra time. And that is one hell of a game. It's also going to be big Rasmus there picking up most goals in that competition as well. Not the best display in the FA Cup, to be honest. I am going to show you it. And I have saved a little treat for ourselves. I always see comments saying, you don't play any games. Do you play your games? So we're going to play a game today just to show you what this tactic actually is like. And that is going to be against Barcelona in the Champions League final, where Hoyland has, as you can imagine, been the lead goal scorer. But going over to the squad, we are going to look at the current. We're going to see 49 goals coming out from Rasmus. We've got 34 coming in from Marcus. Bruno coming in with 16, 11 for Mount. Sancho with 10. 
eight for Anthony, six for Martinez, even Martial getting five goals. That's kind of nice to see. In terms of assists, we've got 34 for Bruno, 18 for Rashford, Sancho with 15, 11 for Rasmus, Eriksen with 10, 10 for Anthony, Mason Mount with nine, five for Shaw, and four for Malasia. So realistically, we are seeing exactly what we want, what we want to be seeing. Bruno Fernandes now getting that license to do what he wants to do. For eight chances, Mount, I imagine, is doing a lot of the run and work. And if you have a little look at Mount, I can imagine here, yeah, he's played a lot of games, to be fair. I'm averaging quite a decent match rating as well. Obviously, something that we are sort of wanting to see with this United team. In terms of the data hub, though, we are going to be looking at 2.45 goals per game. So not the most outrageous high score and system, but that wasn't really to be expected in the Premier League. Conceded per game at 0.66, so very good defensively. A decent pass completion as well, 86.67, and just under... 21 shots a game. So the Champions League final, Barcelona line up with Tostegan Kunde, Araujo Garcia, Balde, Dion, Pedri, Gavi, Torres, Fati, and Lewandowski. And we have put out this team here. It is going to consist of Onana, Dallo, Varane, Martinez, Luke Shaw, Casemiro, Mount Fernandez, Anthony Rashford, and Big Rasmus up top. And it is an absolute blockbuster of a game, a Champions League final. And let's get into it right now. Make sure we've got the right stuff on. We're going to go into the key highlights only. We're also potentially going to speed it up a little bit. But let's go and have a little look now. We'll get it on the nice TV angle and let's see exactly what we can do. As it is going to be Barcelona winning possession back in the midfield. Dion goes out wide into Kunde. Taking his time out on the right-hand side. Hopefully, can't get a ball into Lewandowski. Barcelona are enjoying quite a good spell of possession here, which is to be expected, to be honest, but really ends up going to absolutely nothing. As we do win it back, great, great bit of play out from the backs, to be fair. Into Rasmus. Is he going to cut it back? He's out wide at the moment. Goes all the way back into Luke Shaw. A good option, to be fair. He's going to go down the left-hand side. Gets a little bit lucky there. With it into Bruno Fernandes. He takes a hit. It's a bit of a waste. We've got to slow it a bit down because I feel like we're talking at 5,000 miles an hour. But realistically, I'm hoping from this game, we can sort of get something. That is going to be the main the main focus. I don't care how we win it. If it comes down to extra time, penalties, I don't mind. Let's just try and win this because it is a massive game. As Rashford picks it up from a ball over the top, Balde tries to clear it. doesn't really go anywhere. We're absolutely dominating them at the moment. Into Bruno Fernandes, back across. What is going on with the game? Why is it so laggy? The ball stopped in the middle. A goal's gone in. I'm not entirely sure what has happened there. It's very random because my PC can hack any game realistically. And for some reason on FM, it has moments like this. I'm not entirely sure why, but we do go 1-0 up. And in fact, we are going to watch this goal because we sort of missed the actual goal, didn't we? It's going to be Bruno Fernandes who drives it in. Oh, it comes off to... It's a bit of a weird one, to be honest. But we are 1-0 up nevertheless inside of eight... Well, about nine minutes we actually got the goal. It's going to be Rasmus, obviously. Make, he has had such a good season into Bruno now, into Rashford, on the edge, into Martinez, out wide, into Mason out, takes such a good hit it to Stegen, a great save from to Stegen, what a moment that would have been for Mason Mount, a player which doesn't usually score too many goals, that would have been a time to get one, Bruno Fernandes ball in the box, into Rasmus, is a good clearance, is Frankie Dion going to keep it in, he's not, interesting fact by the way, Mason Mount has only ever got two assists through open play, don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I suppose it's not really there for the assists, but I found that fact out and I thought it was false, but apparently it is true. But so far, so good in this game. We're just going to praise the lads because it has been quite a good performance. Um, I mean, the goal was a little bit scrappy, but in terms of the stats, you can see right here, we've dominated everything apart from possession, which against a team like Barcelona, we're not really expecting to do. Obviously, they're playing a very similar formation to us. But the first half has been done. Obviously, I don't think we're going to make any substitutes right now. We have got a couple of bookings at the back, so we are going to be very careful with that because we don't want any red cards. So the second half is underway then, and hopefully we can seal this game out right now. I believe we are going to try and utilize the defensive variant at some point as well. So we are going to be switching to that at some point. But for now, we're going to keep it as it is because although there's no highlights... That's completely fine by me. At the end of the day, we are 1-0 up, and I'm going to keep praising the lads, and the changes are going to come in after this highlight, potentially. Around the 75th minute is what I was planning, as it is going to be a good clearance, but Mount picks it up. There's loads of space out here. Into Bruno Fernandes, into Luke Shaw. He's just going to take his time here. Back into Casemiro, who's playing this role so well. Into Varane, into Anthony, out wide, into Dallo. Great link-up play through the right-hand side. Anthony down the right-hand side, cuts it back. A ball inside into Rasmus, and it's just over. We're creating some very good chances here. Great link-up play down the right-hand side between Dallo and Anthony. And that's exactly what we can expect to see. But let's go ahead and switch to this defensive variant. 
Spencer's variant has been applied and we have also made three substitutions. That is going to be Garnacho Eriksson and also Harry Maguire, believe it or not, coming on because obviously we have got a booking at the back and hopefully that doesn't come to cost us. But we are now going to be seeing this defensive variant fully in action after the ball goes out of play, I believe, because it was actually obviously in play when we made the change. But this is going to be a good indicator of how good this can obviously hold on to games in this scenario against a very good Barcelona team. As it's going to be Kunde playing it out. We do win it back though with Marcus Rashford. Luke Shaw on the ball over the top there into Rasmus. Nothing really comes from it. We try and win it back again, but Barcelona Barcelona being quite possession heavy right now. Not really putting too much of a foot wrong until then. It's an absolute shock a bit of defending from a Rauhau. Rasmus, he needs options. He's got one. Marcus Rashford who hits it. And it's on the side netting or the top netting. And I tell you what, this game has been absolute drama from start to finish. We have now deployed def the um, defensive variant, should I say. And you can see Garnacho, Eriksson and Maguire do come in as well. And are we going to see this out? This is going to be a very good statement of the defensive tactic. It is. There we go. We are going to be your Champions League winners. We held on to a 1-0 win, which I'm not against, realistically. I do wish United had that in their game a little bit more, to be honest. That sort of grit, you know, to actually grind out a game and sort of, if you have to time waste, run the clock down. But there's the celebrations and what a cup final. So I'm now going to break down the tactic for you guys, but I do want to quickly say if you are enjoying today's video, please do consider leaving a like, dropping a little comment below on what sort of team you want to see next, next season's tactics as well. And also do subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell for more tactical breakdowns and fantastic rebuilds. So we are now going to break down 10 hogs, 23 to 24 tactics. There's going to be three variants. I want to thank all of the wonderful names coming down the screen right now. These are going to be existing all new Patreon members. Patreon is a great way to support me as a creator, and also you get some really good perks for yourselves, including access to all three of these files. You get early video and tactic release, priority in your tactic and rebuild requests. You also get one-on-one -on -one tactical help, access to exclusive giveaways, and also much more. I'm constantly trying to figure out more stuff I can give back to you guys. But let's go ahead and break down these three tactics. So we're going to kick things off then with, right off the bat, it's going to be in possession. Firstly, I will say it's going to be positive. And it is going to be based off a clean slate for anybody wondering. But in possession, we've got fairly wide, overlap left, play out from the back is an absolute necessity, shorter passing, a higher tempo, be more expressive, and also mixed crosses. Now, I really just wanted to have one overlap and option, and that was going to be Luke Shaw. Now, you arguably can have him on both, but I sort of opted for that on the attack and variant, because in real life, I'd say both fullbacks get involved. In the game, it can leave you very, very vulnerable. So that is why we've only gone with one. In terms of transition, we've gone with counter press, counter, and take short goal kicks. And we've not actually selected an area on this occasion because I feel like Onana is going to be a little bit more of a risky, like sort of it's ball playing keeper, even a word, but a bit of a ball playing keeper. Like he can, he's going to play it to the center backs and they are going to build up from the back. That is what they're going to do. But I think if there is going to be a good run on, he's going to go for it. And I think that's something which we are sort of missing from the team. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. And out of possession, we've gone with a standard defensive line because I wouldn't say that Ten Hag plays a higher or even a lower, um, especially when he's not chasing the game desperately or anything like that. With the high press line of engagement more often, and of course, get stuck in because United did pick up quite a few bookings last season. We are a very aggressive team when we try and win that ball back. Now, going over to the player roles, no masks right now, as requested by the viewers. I always listen to what you guys say. And here we go. So we're going to have a sweeper keeper on support on the default we have got a wing back on support on stay wider nice and basic for this back line guys a ball playing defender on the absolute default exactly the same on the left hand side and also the wing back is going to be the same as the right a wing back on support on stay wider and essentially what this back four does they are very resilient they're very good at the back the, the fullbacks got involved in the highlights you saw that in the barcelona game so it's never really an issue that they're not to attacking they're also not over committed to the point where we get absolutely torn apart at the back so it's quite a nice balance we then got over to casemiro in the dm on defend on tackle harder now this is where i really feel casemiro is going to thrive because he's always performed a little bit better being the actual just individual in that role and yeah he had a great season last year but i do feel like he's going to thrive just being that single guy in this area here we then go over to the box to box obviously the mason mount role on support on cross aim center get further forwards and also move into channels a very crucial role in this team and then we actually opt for an advanced playmaker on attack on roam from position and also tackle harder now you can use a metzala i personally preferred an advanced playmaker but 
you can use either one, they're going to get very similar results. Over on the left hand side, we've got an inside forward on attack, on shoot more often and roam from position. And on the right, we've got an inverted winger on attack on the absolute default. Finish it off, the cherry on top. That is going to be an advanced forward on attack on close down more. Over to the attacking variant now then, and it is going to be instantly changed to an attacker mentality. In possession, we've got fairly wide still. We're overlapping on both sides now with the fullbacks. We've maxed out the tempo. We've got be more expressive and also run at defense on. So we are literally flying at the opposition now. And this is exactly what you want to use if you are chasing the game. If I went 1-0 against Barcelona, 1-0 down that is against Barcelona, and it was still like that in the 70th minute, that is when I would have utilized this tactic. In transition, we've got counter press, counter, distribute quickly and take short goal kicks. So we've obviously got the quickly on now because we want to get the ball moving. We want to get back into the game as quick as possible. And out of possession, we've gone with the higher line just because in the game, that is a really good way to actually apply pressure on the opposition and really push your team up the field. And that is exactly why we have got that in the attack and variant, but not all the time in the default on more often and also get stuck in. In terms of player roles, so the only real change that is going to be coming in are going to be a couple of the positions, to be honest. So the front three actually remain the same, apart from this role here, where we actually do tell them to shoot more often. By the way, anyone that I don't show, that's not me hiding anything. It's because they're literally the same instructions and it saves you guys time, me not going over the same stuff. So it is going to be on shoot more often. The Metzala does come in on this occasion because he's a little bit more attacker minders, not as balanced, but there again, we are literally trying to get goals, goals, goals. So a Metzala on attack on dribble more and also tackle harder. And the last player role change is actually a box to box who obviously was in the team, but he's just pretty much told to be a bit more aggressive, get further forwards and cause some issues. And that is going to be the attack and variant broken down time for the defensive area now obviously we we switched to this one in the game and it worked an absolute treat we used we pretty much utilized it for the last 10 minutes didn't we and it worked nothing really happened i mean it was quite a quiet game anyway but this definitely sucks the life out of a, out of a team trust me and it's going to be balanced mentality in possession we've got standards still playing out from the back much shorter slightly higher play for set pieces dribble less mixed crosses and frequently and you might say can you explain it what's going on and basically the idea of this variant is to literally be a very possession minded team play with a little bit of a frustrating mentality or trying to frustrate the opposition time wasting obviously playing for set pieces dribble less means we're going to have the ball more like we're not going to be as expressive we're going to pass the ball about really waste time and that's exactly what i what i done in that champions league final in transition we have got counter press counter still taking short goal kicks we didn't offer slow pace down or obviously distribute quickly nice and balanced in this area and we've remained this to be exactly the same arguably you could go even more scummier and even more time wasting, if that's even a word. And you can actually distribute to the center backs and the full backs, because this way there's going to be literally zero risk when you do have the ball with your goalkeeper. And out of possession, we've gone with a standard line, still got the high press and line, but standard on the press and still got get stuck in, because that is United's DNA. In terms of the actual player roles, there are going to be some changes. So the back line remains the same. The DM remains the same. The box to box just gets a little bit more restricted. That is pretty much it. It's still on support on cross aim center, moving to channels and tackle harder. The center mid comes in instead of obviously the advanced playmaker and the Metzala on support on dribble less and also tackle harder. The inside forward is literally a default and exactly the same on the right hand side and the advanced forward remains exactly the same but obviously without the close down more on because we're not going to try and overcommit these players and that is going to give you guys three very very good ten hag inspired 4-3-3 tactics which i can really see this united team playing with next season because based off the signings we're making it sort of links up into this way but please do consider leaving a comment below on any other teams you want to see i'm going to try and do all of the big premier league teams at some point before the season starts but if you do enjoy your videos your videos my videos but you enjoy watching them please do consider dropping the like, hitting the subscribe button and turn on the notifications. We are closing in rapidly on 11K. But enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.